beginning to be impressed by what's going on here. Um, and the quality of the startups is unparalleled to a lot of what I've seen in the Bay Area. So I'm glad to see another emerging um, tech hub. Oh, so how much have you explored? I mean, you've been to the coffee shop and talked to people, yeah. and you've also been like going on the course for Zappos and seeing the container park progress and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, so we went to Zappos today, which is like the craziest shoppers in the world. Um, and then, of course, that was your first time? That was my first time, yeah. Did you do the Shakeway thing? Oh, they did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how anyone gets anything done. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee shop. I've been looking at a lot of the co working spaces. Um, it's, it seems to be there's two or three now, and just um, a lot of the urban planning. Uh, and also, like, kind of impressed with what you guys are all doing with um, new healthcare and, and schools. Yeah. That's probably the most interesting bit. Yeah, because $50 million is just for education, and then um, yeah, the rest is for like, yeah, $50 million for education, $50 million for small businesses, $50 million tech, and then $200 million for money yeah. value. But you can buy a lot more land than San Francisco. Yeah, so that makes a big difference. I was, I'm astonished by how cheap things are. <laughs> like it's just, I was told that it's like 2100 for a unit. And I was so confused. I was, we were just talking before, and I was like, are you sure you're like going to be 2100 per person? I was like, no, for the whole unit. Nope, it's um, legit. <laughs> that's, that's life out here. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's talk about cultures that uh, you've experienced in the past and what you think that uh, startups should know about culture. Um, yeah, so I, when I was uh, just starting out at Venture Beat, I, I did this series called the Startup Culture Series, and I would go to a different office once a week and spend a day in a different startup and kind of, um, you know, see what they're doing different to any kind of corporate culture. And I think startups have this really unique opportunity to decide what, what do they want their culture to be. And a lot of them, you know, begin by writing these sort of handbooks, these long handbooks of this is, this is, you know, what defines us as a company. And probably no one reads them. Um, but it's little, it's little, you know, touches. Like you go to one health startup and they don't have any soda or chocolate bars, but everything's organic and it's just tofu and lettuce for lunch. And that's just their cute thing that they love to do. Um, and then others, um, it's a, you know, they don't believe in cubicles. So everyone, it's a very open culture. There's literally no walls. Um, and I think that's great because it just means there's a lot of collaboration and open communication. Others will say, take as many vacation days as you want because we want you to be rested up. And people don't seem to take advantage of that because they take pride in their work. Right. So it's been really great to see how um, you know new companies forming are saying we're going to make this And then, Anna, what would you recommend for a startup? What do you think they can do to build that culture? I mean, do you, or does somebody write this culture? Like, where do you think it comes from? I think it's sort of a decision made by the founders and, and the early employees. Um, and it's how to get people really excited to come into work every day and never really leave. Um, and people in startups, as you know, they do. It's like a 10 a.m. to like one in the morning deal pretty much every day. Um, but I guess, you know, the idea is that everything is provided for you there and you never really have to leave the office. Um, so it's trying to create this culture of like fun, open dialogue, free lunch if you can afford it. Um, yeah, so, you know, I think it's, it, you, can just, you can just decide in your, in your first few months. Maybe put more women on staff, you know? Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, let's switch topics in. Let's talk about uh, women in tech. That's a passion you have, and we'd love to hear about uh, what brought that on and what you're doing with it. Yeah, um, so recently I embarked on a three-month project where I just interviewed women in technology to try to find out why there aren't more. Um, especially female venture capitalists, I think it's less than 7%, and that's the highest um, estimation. Some say that it's only 1% of women in venture, uh, in venture capital are women. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to figure out why it is. And I think a lot of it is just um, the lack of female programmers and developers, which is something that, you know, when startups are looking for. Um, a lot of it is just. And is that cultural? Like, do you think that's a reason? I mean, is that a culture problem in itself? It is people don't learn programming if they're female because they don't think they should? Mm -hmm. I think, but yeah, I mean, yeah. definitely. I, I remember one lady that I spoke with who had taught herself to code, and one of her stories um, was she was telling me that she, you know, she'll always, she's so proud of the fact that she's self-taught, and she'll talk to her uh, female friends about it, many of them are very accomplished, and they'll always say, oh, I don't know how you did that, I never could. But she'll tell her male friend, who are even kind of the taxi driver, the guy that runs the grocery store, and he'll say, I could do that, I just don't have enough time. Um, so it's this belief that women have that they can't do it, for whatever reason. But there's no evidence that any that a woman would be any less um, able to, to program. 
Um, and it probably you know, goes back to early education as well. I think that was the other conclusion that I came to. Is that it just happens, you know, when you're when you're little, when you're a little girl, you're um, picking up Barbie dolls instead of picking up Lego and using right. your hands. Um, so it probably goes back to a very, very young age. And do you have a personal story that got you kind of behind this idea? Um, probably having to hear all my female friends tell me about their experiences at work, just like you know, having strippers in the office and very, you know, like very perfect. I've been killed by the boss at office parties, and I'm like, this is just so not okay. Right. Um, and now I understand why women don't want to work in tech. Uh, so you know, I, I embarked on this long project, and and those are sort of the some of the conclusions that I came to. Do you use a female restroom at uh, Napa? Do you know how nice that was? No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know it was first Well, they, because they, when they bought the building, they had a boys and girls bathroom. Uh -huh. Like, they have so fewer females, they like made it all immaculate in the engineering building, and there's only like, two or three to go in. But I thought maybe you check it out, because I've heard amazing things about it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I mean, you're a reporter, like, you're always, like, probably getting hounded for people to, um, 